In this clip, Uncle Bob talks about why practices like beta deployment should be frowned upon and what attitude professional developers should have instead. I want you to think about what has happened over the last 30 years. Do you realize that people now regularly download betas? You understand what a beta test is? Right? A beta test is when you carefully select a few trusted users and you tell those users, all hell's going to break loose when you use this code. Please be careful, but it would really help us if you used this code to feed us back. And now, of course, we just let people download them. Yep, it's beta. Tough, tough bananas, boys. And you know what? We're never uploading anything but betas. It's going to be betas from now on. This is the attitude of people who are uploading code into the internet. Do you believe that code must have bugs? Be careful. Because <laughs> you know you do. Right? You know you believe code must have bugs. I mean, when I write code, it has bugs. All code must have bugs. I don't want... My expectation, I should say, my expectation is that when you release code, you know it works. You know it works. You don't guess that it works. Has anybody done the guessing game? I think it works. The deadline's coming, man. Should we ship it? Well, you know, I think it works. I mean, it worked yesterday on my laptop. <laughs> when you release code, I expect that you will know that it works. You will know to the best of your ability to know. That may not be a perfect ability, but I want it to be the best of your ability to know that it works. When you release code, I expect that it will be as high a quality code as you can attain within the period of time necessary. I don't want you to just release things that you think sort of work. I don't want you to release things that you think are okay enough. It should be clean. It should be tested. It should be well organized. It should be good, solid code. And do you know who expects that? Everybody expects that, except you. Everybody does. If I buy a product from someone, I expect a high-quality product. If I am using a service from someone, I expect a high-quality service. I don't expect them to come to me and say, well, you know, there's always bugs. I buy a car from someone, right? I expect that car to work. I expect it to have been tested and put through the ringer. I expect that car to work, and I'm going to complain bitterly if even the smallest thing doesn't work. The good thing about Uncle Bob's emphasis on software quality is that holding yourself to higher standards does, over time, lead to more maintainable, stable, and trustworthy systems. But it's important to consider the cost of failure in the specific context of a project or company. Not all failures are equally consequential. A bug in a social media app might be tolerable, while a similar issue in medical software could be catastrophic. Without any quality standards, developers may default to the path of least resistance, leading to short-term wins but long-term technical debt. This is where Uncle Bob's principles matter. They instill a culture that resists sloppy work and values craftsmanship. That said, rigorous quality practices like formal verification or exhaustive testing can slow down delivery. For some companies, especially startups racing towards project market fit, shipping fast can be the difference between survival and bankruptcy. In this context, high standards may intentionally kill a product before it gets a chance. So it's not about choosing between speed and quality, but about understanding where your project lies in that spectrum. Startups may accept more risk. Established companies with a loyal user base need to prioritize more stability and user trust. The key is calibrating your approach to quality based on context, neither blindly embracing perfectionism nor tolerating chaos. Thoughts?